Hello everyone and welcome to the first Strike North America Close Qualifiers presented to you by Nerd Street Gamers. We started with 128 teams and we're now down to just 16. And of course, four of them will get to that main event in December by the end of this week for that chance to get their hand on a share of that 100k prize pool and of course the title of being NA's best Valorant team. Now, unlike the open qualifiers, the the closed qualifiers this week will operate slightly differently. For starters, we will begin this tournament with a group stage that consists of four groups of four. They will take part in a best of three double elimination knockout with the top two teams advancing to the playoffs. That's right. Only two teams will make it to that playoff stage. Today, we'll be bringing you three best of threes from groups A and B. 100 Thieves will be taking on Luminosity, first followed by T1 versus Complexity. We'll then round off the day with a lower round one of Group B. Every game will be streamed this week, so if you want to catch the other games that's not on this stream schedule, feel free to head over to twitch.tv forward slash nerdstreetgamers. Now it's time for me to introduce to you our casters for the first series. It's April and I hold shift. Guys, it's so, so, so great to have you here with me. We have some tasty, tasty games coming up today. But before we jump into that, I wanted to ask you guys, what did you learn from the open qualifiers last week, Shift? <laughs> anybody can beat anybody that is my biggest takeaway what we knew from pop flash the phase invitational before that throw it out the window we've got ourselves a brand new game essentially as far as who is the best what makes the best and obviously we're going to determine here in the next month and a half who indeed will take that number one spot like you mentioned your wonderful opening but yeah the simple fact of the matter is anybody can beat anybody so Throw away your preconceived notions of who are favorites and who are underdogs because we just simply do not have a big enough sample size yet with this new Valorant that we're seeing comparing back to Pop Flash to determine who exactly are the best, biggest and best teams in North America right now. Yeah, and to add to that one as well, Shift, I gotta say, you know, you look at the teams that have actually made it through to the close qualifiers, absolutely a lot of upsets did happen over towards the open qualifiers as well. You have to start thinking about, okay, who's actually on top now? We do have still plenty of favorites, I think. I mean, you're gonna have teams that are roughly favored here, but, you know, you look at the the current top 16, there's gonna be teams in here that uh, I would say that for a lot of people, they might not have considered would make it this far. You look at teams like Exit, they're still fairly new, they're still fairly strong looking as well, but probably not on that list initially, built by Game games as well um equinox coming up a lot of these teams that um have been on the up and up and have only now started to make some really major strides so this is a really exciting time for NA Valorant Mm, yeah, of course, you know, they had to do a lot to make it this far, but this is almost like a bit of a beginning if they want to make it all the way to that main event. And these group stages aren't going to be that easy. You know, the first game we're covering today is 100 Thieves versus Luminosity. So if we take a look at that group, I mean, how difficult do you think it will be for both of these teams to realistically progress to uh, the playoff stage, Avril? I think you look at this group A um, uh, to play towards the favorites a little bit here. Cloud9 Blue and 100 Thieves definitely would be the top one and two teams in this group on paper. But I do think this is one of the two groups of deaths here uh, between groups A and B. These are the two most competitive groups in my mind. Uh, LG and Exit both have massive upset potential. We've already seen that a little bit in the open qualifiers. I would not be surprised if they brought that through today. Both Cloud9 Blue and 100 Thieves will have to be on their guard. They may be technically favorites on paper, but to actually make it through in the top two of this GSL group, they're going to have to bring uh, bringing everything out now this is a really tough group i mean 100 thieves were in trouble versus moon raccoons we watched that map number three come through it was two different overtimes that may have been their wake-up call though because then they played up against dignitas and smoked them in two games and they put up an okay showing versus tsm in the later stages of that open qualifier playoff bracket but once you get the top 16 you kind of wondered was there maybe a little bit of softening up as far as what the teams were actually bringing forward? You're not going to be afforded that kind of luxury here in this Group A matchup because, like Avril had mentioned, Xset is extremely talented. They've been putting in the work. They've been getting progressively better week by week by week up until when they were previously uh, playing as pretty boys, you know, when we last saw them from essentially just after the Pop Flash Pulse series, things like mm -hmm. that, now going over into what we have in front of us today. So all four of these teams, I, I have a hard time fully predicting this group outside of the fact that Cloud9 is probably going to be the better team out of all four of them, but I still use the word probably selectively because you just never know in this day and age. 
Mm, I mean, I think this is definitely one of those groups that it's going to be a lot harder than predict than it seems. Um, but of course, you guys down in the Twitch chat, you can join us with these predictions. Definitely vote in the Twitch poll now on who you think is going to win this first series. But all right, ladies and gentlemen, I won't keep you waiting any longer. We're ready to jump into the first game. It's 100 Thieves versus Luminosity, and they will be on a bind. Take it away, guys. Thank you very much, Yitsu and Avril. You know, one of the big things here is we take a look at our map set for this one. We've got Bind, Ascent, and then the potential of Haven is map number three. And uh, the big consideration here, I think, for both of these teams on map number one is that they're both very comfortable here. If you were just to look at what's been going on since the first strike series has started, both teams so far perfect, although some may be more convincing than others. This Bind map was the map three versus Moon Raccoons at 100 Thieves. They got to overtime, were able to stretch it, and then win it 50 15 to 13, but there were some sloppy moments back and forth, but that is not a conversation that is strange to Luminosity, because even though they are also perfect on this map since the first strike series has started, they have also had a couple of sloppy moments as well. I gotta say as well, Banning Split Away, uh, that's the one map that we haven't really seen 100 Thieves on so far. We've sure. seen them play Ascent, we've seen them play in Haven as well, Bind as well in this tournament in the Open Qualifiers. They have not played 100 Thieves, that is, they've not played Split since, I believe, um, what is it, Pax Arena, based on stats. So it's been a while. That's going to be, still going to be a while before we see 100 Thieves go towards Split. That might be uh, a map that for later on when 100 Thieves end up playing another team at some stage in this bracket. But you know, like you said here, everyone comfortable on buying. 100 Thieves are particularly very comfortable on Ascent. And then Haven's going to be the decider, which could go either way as well. I think LG put up a really good showing in the Open Qualifier so far. 100 Thieves, like you said, had a couple of hurdles. De decent game versus Dignitas. Falling to TSM, but you'd probably say that TSM were kind of favored in that matchup anyway. Right. This will be the opportunity for 100 Thieves to be able to make it cleanly out of the group in the top two here. Again, they should be favored, but I think Luminosity are going to be a bit of a challenge still. 100% and you know taking a look as far as how these teams and what these rosters have kind of preferred in the past when it comes to bind specifically we're looking at mirror matchups with only one exception 100 thieves they prefer to use the killjoy whereas luminosity prefers to use the cypher and word coming through is we do want to make sure that was confirmed fully 1.10 is what we're playing on not 1.11 so we okay. expect i think largely that those compositional metals will likely stay the same. So you're taking a look at Steel and Proto on opposite sides of one another, one on the Killjoy, one on the Cypher. For my money, there are only maybe a couple of Cyphers that are better than Proto. He has been one of the mainstays of this LG roster and one of the reasons why they have been so favorable in the last couple of weeks, at least in my mind. I think that's going to be important for a team like Luminosity as well, because if we were heading into 1.11 to do a bit of theory crafting here, I would have to say Luminosity have to start considering their options. Do they stay on the Cypher or not? Do they go back towards, or I say back towards, but over towards something like the Killjoy, which hasn't quite had as many heavy-handed nerfs as, say, the Cypher, but being on 110 right. still is going to be very important for, I think, Luminosity in particular in terms of their preparation, being a team that hasn't played any Killjoy. I looked across their stats. I don't believe they played any Killjoy yet. They are a very Cypher-heavy team, uh, but like you said, the rest of the lineup here in terms of roles is consistent for everybody else, which is pretty uh, standard for a map like Bind. I think most teams will consider walking up to Bind, um, playing, you know, the Razors, the Sobers, the Omens, and most teams still prefer to put a jet in there as well so nothing really unusual to speak of on either end there i do expect however uh 100 thieves hiko has been phenomenal on the sober specifically really using utility his utility usage in terms of accuracy is unreal so that's going to be an x factor i think 400 thieves and beyond that, you know, obviously you're seeing names like Asuna and Dicey who joined this team more recently. And there has been no slowdown. I think there may be some consideration, you know, with 100 Thieves, you know, trying to take a while to lock in this roster. They pick up two solid options. But I know some of our individual concerns was, was Dicey as just a jet operator pickup going to really pan out for 100 Thieves, mm -hmm. especially considering that a lot of the meta after Pop Flash going through the Pulse series and then up until the first strike qualifier, a lot of our quote unquote tier two teams had been trusting rifling over over operator skills simply due to the cost change that comes in. What we quickly learned, though, is that Asuna and Dicey are going to do just fine no matter what the meta seems to be. Asuna in specific was one of the top performers overall for 100 Thieves, held over a 1.0 KD in the opening rounds and a 240 plus average on his ACS. So, again, when it comes to getting a little bit of extra surge out of the 100 Thieves squad, Asuna and Dicey have been a great addition to make them a major contender in my mind.
Yeah, for sure. And I think this team as well is is very much built around uh, the fact that Dicey is going to be on the jet operator as much as possible. Asuna right. has the choices between Reyes and Rainer here. I think those are the only two agents he's really been playing so far in the tournament. I don't expect he'll be changing things up too much here. Uh, I mean, the possibility for the Phoenix to come through, I have to say as well, for, for Asuna. But uh, other than that, his main picks have been between Reyes and Reyna. So 100 Thieves definitely know where their composition lies. Killjoy is going to be a centerpiece of this team as well. They're one of the few teams, I believe, that almost have... I believe they actually do have a 100% play rate on the Killjoy. Obviously, minus Split that we haven't seen yet, but Split's been one of Killjoy's maps as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if Steel's bringing that one through. Steel, so far from what we can gather, feels very confident about bringing the Killjoy on the field. So... Nothing should change there, and everyone is playing their expected picks as we head into map one of 100 Thieves versus Luminosity. And we are going to be getting Luminosity on the attack first. They are incredible on attack, winning 66% of their offensive rounds on average. Let's see if that will hold true, because on the other side for 100 Thieves, they have been quite convincing defensively as they win almost 77% of their defensive rounds, but this time opening first blood will be Proto. Steel, and actually, how about this? It was Dicey again. We saw them do this against Moon Raccoons where they try to push through this long teleporter at A, try to get some kills over towards Shower, but once again, for the second time, we've seen it not pan out successfully as Elge is going to get a free spike point. Planted. You also saw Hiko, by the way, do a very early lineup all the way from spawn. They had Steel pushing through the smoke over towards short to have a look. And unfortunately, they do lose a member fairly early now. This will heavily depend upon Dicey on this flank. And we did get some real work done. Is being watched for now. 5v4 on this retake. And as soon as in. Yeah, they know 100% the Dice is in the backside, but the problem is he's getting here maybe faster than expected. So Dicey and Asuna will find two eliminations. Keep your eye on Proto. The Cypher that's coming through showers right now could pinch this up, but his teammates need to hold things from the front. One that's going to be good for man. KZ, but the spike is being held. KZ's trying to stay alive to get the retake through, but will not come through successfully. So Dicey, even though he's trapped over towards the A-long teleporter, he stays alive, and he is very critical in the retake for 100 Thieves as they take the first round. Yeah, absolutely. He comes through, gets the early kill there, brings it back to a 4v4, very competitive for the side of 100 Thieves, and losing the site early and still coming in for a very clean retake on that pistol. Important for the early momentum here as well. Let's take a look at what Hiko might want to do on this opening. Again, he had this spawn kind of line up with the recon bolt, and that landed roughly towards the showers location. He had Steel walking up towards short, Steel still on towards A this time around, but this is where Luminosity are now leading towards B. You do have the Marshal in play as well for Steel, so keep your eyes on the Killjoy heel back up towards the top side of A Heaven just to watch over Nitro, who's going to be playing over towards Showers with a ton of utility around him. But for now, LG look primed and positioned to try to execute over towards B, depending on the information that they find. And I think they do actually scout out Dicey as at least one member that's there, but also does able to find one kill. Bill early and trade to come through. Tailwind's trying to stay alive, but they know they've got Dicey completely isolated. So a two for two trait. Kiko holding his life at elbow will find one. Shockguard comes through. That'll be good for his third elimination. The spike does go down, but this is a 1v3 situation, and Mata is going to be trapped up here, and no consideration for him to try to save this. The only bit of fortunate news for them is they do get the spike planted for a second round. And the three default is over towards the B side of 100 Thieves as well, picking up all the necessary kills. Hiko in particular, we talked about the value of the utility coming on in, but with the Stinger, with the Ghost, and with the Shock Bolt as well. They're going to be able to pick up the round, and also the rifle on the floor. Soon it gets his Phantom back. He did bite up in this particular round. Dicey already has a third round operate. He saved up Ghost last round as well. So going for a bit of a timing play here. Still will hold on to two SMGs, but we'll come down to Dicey. He's going to be the key member of this particular round to shut down LG on their first buy. It's going to be very important for LG as well not to lose momentum they need to win this one or they're going to be up they're going to be down rather four rounds pretty soon Okay, Dicey with the early operator has been so incredible for the effort defensively for 100 Thieves in the past another position for a stack towards long beat Steel is here with Hiko but they're not really loving the look of it so they'll back away also keep your eye on the minimap over towards A showers because you've got the jet and uh, the Ray is playing aggressively, and that's also cleared up the ability to capture that orb. So, good map pressure here early for 100 Thieves. No early rotations just yet. Again, 100 Thieves haven't really scouted out what was happening over towards B Long. They took an early look, but didn't see anyone. Don't you play that one nice and slowly? So, now there are four people going towards the B area. Aldrone was used, destroyed very quickly as well. Probably didn't see too much, to be honest. Aldrone probably just saw the one player of Marta, the opposite Sova. And at this point in time, as soon as with the early opening frag, that actually will slow things down a little bit more for LG. They're waiting for a proto to come along as well for the eventual hit. 
and it's on the way. Dark cover placed over towards the defensive side of the spawn. 100 Thieves needs to stay alive as much as humanly possible through Elbow, and they've done well. The Utility's finding so much value, and Hasuka, who just tosses left. out the paint cells, will find a kill. Blind Showstopper will not connect, though. Mod is going to keep things even. 3v3 underneath 23 seconds now. This plant is starting to come through. Asuna making his way onto the site. Going to try to clear off Walk. Nice shot there for number three. Not going to get the fourth, though. Stellar able to double up. Now it's just down to Dicey in a 1v2. And this is a very early operator to keep in mind. This would provide a big risk versus reward potential if he does decide to go for this. He might get timing here as well. Look at Stella's positioning over through from elbow. Stella swings at the right time. Dicey will go down. This is a very difficult situation for Dicey to play in. You don't want to lose the operator early. Doesn't have enough money to revive. Certainly doesn't have a lot of time. Now needs to get an early kill. Can't find anybody. It might go down here. Anyway, that is a big loss of 100 Thieves early on in the half. Huge. I mean, you go back to when they played Dignitas most recently on this map for 100 Thieves. Dicey was able to collateral and put find himself seven total operator kills. Definitely some of the largest that we've seen since the operator changes. It, it, seven doesn't seem like a lot, but when that takes up the better part of your overall kills, I mean, Dicey finished with 14. That's half of his kills came by way of operator. Now you've already got that threat eliminated early. That's big news for LG trying to get this offense going quickly. It's a big money sink as well for 100 Thieves. I'm a little, a little bit surprised they didn't walk away with the gun. We're on 110, by the way, so that new economy changes aren't into effect. But even if they were, you'd still want to save the operator rather than, you know, die and get the boat loss bonus. It doesn't really make sense here for 100 Thieves to try and play that 1v2 situation with Dicey, which would have been a very difficult one for sure. Early on this round, though, you can see the early teleport play. Asuna with the only proper gun. No, I lie. Hiko is also going to rifle. You've got two hero rifles here, but Asuna... Taking that one early into the exit of the teleporter over towards B-Ramps. Spike still left mid-market, though, so no commitment coming through. And Asuna's position should be aware for LG. It just comes down to, can you really do anything about it, I think is the bigger question. I'll join over towards B. We'll clear out the B-Long wooden area, plus as well the long hallway. But just as soon as it expires, it'll be KZ trying to push forward. The Spike is now going to meet this push into Hookah. So you're looking at Asuna. Can he find a way to foil this from the back and hopefully help 100 Thieves defensively? Here comes the hit, or at least so you would think. Still very passive so far, and whoa, Dicey's going to get picked. That's a brilliant first blood. Asuna coming out of the teleporter will be made aware. 1v1 in Hookah. He's going to win that. So now all of a sudden, LG is completely trapped. They're going to try to stick for the plant, but this is going to be very dangerous. Stellar's going to make it one more time to come through, but he goes able to find a kill. 100 Thieves in a 4v3. The retake looking good right now. There. Find it inside container as well to make sure they don't get pitched too hard yet. Have a control over towards the hookah side of things. Very important. Hiko pulls through under Sphere. A little bit of connection again. Oh. Nice kill on the cellar as well. Make it 3v2. And still, double entry. Two players on site. They should be able to get the cleanup. But Casey's making this one very difficult sooner. Still has a gun. Hiko still has a gun. Still an opportunity. A 2v1 now. It just comes down to Casey. Can he hold down? The answer is no. Hiko for another three. And the defuse will come in for three rounds to one. Everything on that round came down to what happened in that 1v1 hookah battle with Asuna. If Asuna loses that battle, LG is safe to exit back towards Hookah or towards B long. They've got a really solid post plant position based on the fact that the spike was planted inside that container like you had mentioned, but they lose that gunfight. All of a sudden, LG's completely trapped. They have to hold their tight angles on the B site, and yes, KZ does a good job to keep it even, but the overwhelming pressure by numbers for 100 Thieves in combination with the positions they took away from LG's post plant led to the successful round for 100 and now they're up 3-1 because of it. LG had to get off site there in terms of going towards B long. That was their only option. If they stay on site, they're going to be in trouble. They need to, at least in the 2v2, try to isolate kills, go for the 2v1 situations, but it doesn't work that way from this way. time around. Heading to the next round, though, Blaze Storm's being pulled out. Both of them, in fact, from both players. Dicey, I already started the classic here. KZ, same story, heading over towards Showers. <laughs> KZ needs an extra shot of the classic to take care of it. You gotta keep in mind that 100 Thieves in the past, when they were foiling up Moon Raccoons in that very tight overtime, it came on the backside of double operators. Are they potentially trying to bring that out again versus LG? Just something to consider as we go through this. Steel would be that player to pick up the double operator if they so choose to go that direction. Mata trying to find a way to help. Shock Dart will go over towards the connector. It's actually pretty well placed. It'll keep Dicey a little bit tagged up. 
KZ's worked his way onto the site, but the spike is not here for any of this, you gotta keep in mind. And as nice he finds first blood, it will be traded, but this has been still a solid hold for 100 Thieves. Now all of a sudden, Stellar's gonna bring the spike, KZ with the classic, another kill up top, but the numbers are staying still in favor of 100 Thieves defense. KZ will pick up a gun here as the knives start to fade away, can't get quite get killed 100 Thieves are sooner. And that's going to be it. Unfortunately, the equipment value coming through for 100 Thieves so much higher in this particular round. It was four guns, three rifles, one bulldog, and a blade storm. And over for the side of Luminosity, four pistols, one bulldog, and a blade storm. So not quite the same. Casey does do a decent amount of damage there. Going to the next buy round now. It has been a fairly consistent lead. The 100 Thieves, four rounds, just the one, two in a row. They lose one, and another two in a row here. So Luminosity do get their loss bonus reset fairly quickly. Dicey gets another shot at the operator now, which is going to be also very important. No armor this time around. So glass cannon over towards showers, but shouldn't get a lot of action towards showers unless a proto wants to walk in that direction. But just keep in mind that 100 Thieves love to double chow the showers orb just to try to keep it safe away from LG, but beyond that, it also gives a lot of information that, hey, if I don't see anything, it either has to be mid or it has to be over towards B. And speaking of B, for 100 Thieves defensively, Steel once again in combination with Hiko, they are looking at the better part of four members of LG that are looking primed to come on through. Hunter's Fury will start things off for Mata. He gets a tag off of his Aldra, but he actually can't connect the Hunter's Fury, so this one completely gone awry early for LG's initial approach. Dicey's off the line there as well, so they are sensing some action heading over towards the B side of things. Well Possible nice hit glitch shots. here found. Mardo to steal. It's going to be another 5v4. Luminosity have been able to find a lot of these opening picks nice and early, but they haven't been able to convert. 100 Thieves time and time again have been able to swing things back over towards a 4v4. And Dicey now looking over towards short as Luminosity rotate in that specific direction. This is going to be important now. Dicey is going to be up for a potential kill to swing things back into favor for 100 Thieves. I mean, this is actually a, a pretty ideal situation for 100 Thieves. You're weak defensively on B right now without the potential oh, of Steel B left. here. If Dicey's can find one, now you've got a 4v4 and he's able to do it. So now, with only 25 seconds left, you have to commit, but Thief was able to take down Dicey with a well-placed headshot. Showstopper now coming through for Asuna. Gets shut down by Proto, and the spike has not been fully committed, but now more safely will be planted behind this play from Thief. Showstopper available for Luminosity as well. Thief wants to go for this one. 3v2. This is the really, really big round for LG to try and win. They have a nice numbers advantage here. Ultimate advantage as well. It's Nitro and it's Heatco. Limited utility, but he still just hit so well. Heatco, his accuracy on the shock bolts have been insane. And now this is where I do expect the Showstopper must be used. Paranoia coming out, but the recon bolt will actually stop Nitro in his tracks. Gonna try to channel. Showstopper comes through blindly. It's still fun. Nitro just found a Hiko for a 1v2. Both of one player over toward Shortfoot can't win the gunfight. And oh, you thought Hiko was going to save the day there with the shock dart, didn't you? But not the case. The showstopper, like you wanted, Avril gets called, and Luminosity find their second round. Yeah, but they will be able to force that ultimate, so that's really important. Note that as soon as had two showstoppers so far within six rounds, so I mean, he's on an entire roll right now, 10 to 4, the score line. He's had so much work done. Expecting a third showstopper before the round, uh, before the half is done for sure for the side of 100 Thieves here. Keeping Dicey's uh, operator still in. I, I think there might have been a rebuy there actually, so they're really coming into this one. Feeling good about the situation in terms of what Dicey can do, but once more, no one hitting in his direction early. It's more B action for now. Looks like they're going to try to free up a maybe early aggressive angle with a shock dart blindly just to try to get this corner, but... Maybe not again. He saw it being held there for a second by Mata, one of the newcomers to LG. He has played well throughout the opening qualifier. Trying to get things going for LG offensively this time around. Aldron will try to scout things out. They do see the sentry turret that's been placed, but they also get a tag on this steel who gets completely isolated. Now Asuna trying to keep things alive. Failed tailwind for KZ, but he still confirms the kill and Thief will take care of Hiko. The B site wide open for LG's taking. And Hiko down is going to be really important now as well. 100 Thieves lose their big info character, the two players that are alive right now. I think Nitro might want to go for this one. He doesn't have the best value equipment right now. Just the Spectre in hand. Has an early 1v1 over towards Hooker. Needs to win this one. Get a gun upgrade. That'll be really important. We'll find it nice and easy on Proto. Dicey, thinking about the situation. You see that Dicey is playing very close towards spawn. He wants to fall off. If things get a little bit hairy here, he doesn't want to commit the operator again. Needs yeah. Nitro to get a little bit more work done, but I think the two of them realize that time is starting to run out very quickly now, and the save might just be in hand. 
Maybe playing for exits as well, though, with Nitro's position. The only place that would be safe for LG is to make it through Hookah at the moment. Even that could potentially be contested. Dice is going to get an opportunity. He finds one. Cloudburst will keep him safe. Tailwind away. Nitro finds another. This is a very costly offensive round here for LG. Clutch. But there is still potential of one more point of contact. Dice, do you really want to challenge this? Looks like he will back away, and the only member to survive will be KZ. But more importantly, you get an extra kill for Dicey and Nitro. It'll help them out a little bit for potentially purchasing up for squad mates if they so choose. But it looks like face of the economy, it'll just be essentially a light buy behind this solo Vandal solo operator for 100 Thieves in this next defensive round. Nitro can drop for a teammate here as well, probably over towards Steel or Hika or something like that. They don't have the best equipment value here, but they do have to play off of Dicey, and now he's kind of learned as well. He's moving over towards B. He's not found very uh, very much over towards A so far. And Spike has been leaning more so towards B for most of these rounds, and this is the opportunity now. Dicey feels that one is close by, but it's going to fall off the angle very quickly. This is a big round right here, all things considered. I mean, it, it's not going to feel like a massive one because if you go 4-4 four, four tied, it's kind of whatever if you're 100 Thieves. But if you win this round with only the Operator and the Vandal and the potential to maybe upgrade these pistols or SMGs freely, this could lead to a potential snowball. So big moments here. And you feel like if you're a 100 Thieves fan, you really want to see them try to find a way to make this round competitive, if not find a way to sneak it away. You've got so uh, ultimates to play with as well, but Thief will find first blood. Asuna was wide peeking over towards the outside of Hookah, and that will be I good for LG exactly. to maybe now try to aggress. Neural Theft will come through. Dicey's going to hold it for a second, but then very wisely back away to make sure the Operator stays safe. And that's going to give a lot of information over towards LG as well. They know where the Operator is now. It's towards over the B side of things, so LG now move over towards A instead. Dicey hasn't rotated yet. Note that, by the way, of the seven rounds that we've played, most of them have been LG picking up first blood. 100 Thieves are consistently down one at the beginning. They have to bring it back to a 4v4, but they are mm -hmm. constantly in a 4v5. Steel has been responsible for two of the early deaths in the past couple left. of rounds as well. He stays alive now, but as soon as down, it's not really pretty either. As soon as the top You're performing sure. player, at least from the KD side of things, LG going to go in early with Thief, and Lockdown is deployed. Well, Lockdown is well timed here as well. Five seconds it will deploy, which will only give LG about five seconds unless they make sure they stay detained. And okay, Nitro and Steel able to find left. one each. Spike has not been planted yet. It's been re-picked up here by Proto, but he's taken Run down. Steel with two man. massive kills. Dice is going to come through, and the round that you were hoping for for 100 Thieves mostly gets clinched on the back end of Steel, not just with the lockdown, but with a triple only with a Sheriff. And before this round as well, Steel was on one and six. He's been dying so often again, very early picked off, but stays alive. Lockdown timing is absolutely perfect over towards the spawn side of things. And then bam, jumps down, Sheriff in hand, stops the plant coming on through. 15 seconds remaining and LG cannot get it done. A massive round for 100 Thieves to pick up now to keep their economy rolling strong. Dicey doesn't have to repurchase them to the operator. They don't have to rely on the early operator kills. And like this, a 4v5, the 100 Thieves are able to win through regardless. Massive round for 100 Thieves. So now LG are now primed with how do you bounce back into this offensive half? You're going to see KZ on the Bladestorm. It's going to be uncontested this time as Dicey does not have the ability to meet him here as he did last time around. Aldrone going to scout out towards Lamps. I don't believe it's going to have the channel to see Hiko, and he will very wisely back away. But here's the challenge coming different. Can you see? Shut right, down by Nitro. On. Steel yeah, able yeah. to find another. Now the Hunter's Fury coming up defensively right down Main Street. And LG are falling apart here in a round that you don't expect them to win, but you would have Run loved to have found more than just a single kill. Might be able to get Nitro. He is fairly low. Nice hitch, connected by Marty here, but should go down very quickly. There it is, Hiko. Pick that one up nice and clean, so keep me four guns alive here. The steel will be the sacrificial lamb, that's fine, he's a support player, he'll take that one on the chin. Let's run these look towards six and three now, very heavily advantage into this first half. They can get one more and secure it, and then they'll have one the half entirely. Seven to five would then be the best score for Luminosity, and this round would determine how the rest of this half will go. But LG, finding success here, keeps them into the half. Losing this round, I think, would kind of put them on the path to a maybe four and eight finish if they're lucky at that stage in the game. So winning this one would be required to keep things towards six and six or maybe five, seven. Yeah, in four or, eight or five would be okay, I think, if you're LG. Again, we hit the stat line that 100 Thieves wins 77% of the time defensively, at least on average that we've seen in the two maps that they played. LG is right there with them, though, with another 77% win rate. And how about this? Offensive operator for KZ actually does find value. So Dicey down early. Leading towards a 5v4 for LG. Lockdown is ready, though, again for Steel. 
and Thief and Asuna once again are going to try to battle each other over towards Nuka. And how about that snapper from Asuna? I thought for sure Thief would have had the jump on him, but he's able to keep things level at four piece. And that's a really important death as well. That's going to be really tough for Luminosity. Still keeping things competitive though. It's three and three, but the HP bar is not really great for LG right now. He really might have to be spent extra. Nope. They lost all their ultimates, and now LG have to start considering the save. Just one player left. However, he's really deep. Stella, unknown though. Would be able to get one kill away fairly safely. They don't know where he is, but he's whiffing the shots currently, and now Stella's in a real deep trouble. He'll go down. My goodness, has Steel ever warmed up? I mean, you mentioned he was one and six to start. What is he at now? He's sitting at nine and seven. So nine and one in the last couple of rounds for Steel since we saw the triple Sheriff come out. He finds a triple in this round as well. And yeah. now as we go into round 11, 100 Turn Thieves will once again to force Luminosity to an eco, which will mean that you hopefully take away eight and you're looking at potentially grabbing nine here if you're 100 Thieves, which would be great for the effort in a map that both teams have been perfect on so far since the first strike qualifier started. Yeah. 9-3 would be pretty devastating for LG to start things out with on the first half, so I think 8-4 and four have to be the target here for LG. They know they have very little chances of winning this particular round. It's once again pistols walking to full equipment purchases from 100 T side of things. A 3 stack over towards short as well, over towards A. 1-1 one to one, though, that's actually not bad for LG start. And look at KZ, he's gonna move forward, able to cloud burst and find himself a weapon. Opportunity as the paranoia was actually well placed over towards Shower, but Steel again comes through clutch. KZ wants to shell this. Him and Proto will find a couple, but from behind, 100 Thieves defense has reinforced, and they will salvage the round. But it is a costly one, not the worst case scenario for LG. The problem is you're still looking at 8-3, to three and you've got one more chance to hopefully grab that coveted 4 like you mentioned a couple rounds previously. And that's the kind of round where you look at Casey's flying on in. He does get the kill this time around. Previously, he had the, he had the uh, Blade Storm in a, in a previous eco. He doesn't quite connect the shots into Nitro, who does die now. Got on the floor. Easily picked up by KZ, tries to convert forward, but they spend so long chasing the other two members over towards showers. They don't quite pick up those kills nearly quickly enough, and it does cost them way too much time. They can't get the plant down. So it ends up not being the best possible round, but like you said, very good for an eco regardless. Dicey now up for an early pick, but will leave a lot of damage and have to back off. A lot of ultimates to potentially be spent. It just comes down to the timing, at least for my mind. Spike will be collected mid-map. It looks to be leaning over towards A, in which defensively you've got Steel and Nitro. A lot of traps that are placed forward on the A side, so you're looking to essentially get at least a kill, maybe even two, or just at best stall this hit completely if you're Steel. Get out of my way! There's not going to be a lot of potential to hold this site once it gets broken past this opening line. Another Bladestorm will be popped this time for 100 Thieves, as again, LG are just Thank waiting you. for the XQ call. Dicey, Blaze Storm over towards the B side of things. Pirate will spot one. Mana's going to take a decent amount of damage. I think 100 Thieves are already starting to think about the rotation. Stella, get a little yeah. bit of information over towards Heaven as well. Slow round for LG this time around. Operator still hasn't quite rotated over towards the A side of things. And LG are waiting for that first pick again. Huh. LG have been responsible for a number of first bloods, making themselves... Fire getting themselves into a 5v4 oh. situation. Look for it again now. Thief has to left. go in. Can't see anything. Down to 51 HP, tries to challenge over towards Lamps. Big 1v1, and Nitro is able to take it. So 100 Thieves still on the site, still contesting. What a shot that is from Dice. He's up top. He's able to find a second. Now Asuna coming with the showstopper. He'll find one more. Spams through the dark cover for a double. He's looking pretty cracked out right now with his aim a little bit shaky. But my goodness, when he locks in, he locks in, and 100 Thieves take the half 9-3. And everything you need to see happens over towards the previous round. As well. I mean, that round was super impressive from Asuna, but the round you knew he was absolutely cracked was over towards Hook. He wins a 1v1 versus Thief, just snaps on to him. Speaking of Thief on the other end, not really having the best game so far. 4 and 11 LG, 11 deaths across the board for every single member. 9 and 3 on to that first half as well. Look how many rounds in a row that 100 Thieves were able to pull through. It just seems like LG weren't able to pick up too much at all. Plenty of Ecos in there as well. They had some close rounds. They've had a lot of rounds where, again, I have to reiterate here, they get the opening first blood. They have a 5v4, but not being able to convert the 5v4 into an actual win has been a bit of an issue for LG. Oh, man. We're going to get a little bit of a battle bots happening over here towards a showers. Hasade will also spend the pain shells to earn himself the first pick of progress towards this showstopper, which, as you had mentioned in the first half, he had, what, three of them? Almost four, it felt like? 
And now for 100 Thieves offensively, come they're going to let Asuna just essentially lurk Shadows. over towards Zay while everyone else stacks. There is the potential of a teleporter play to come through if they don't like the scene as they start to make their way over towards B. Yeah, he did have three. He didn't end up using the third one, but it doesn't really matter at this stage in the game. He was so far ahead, had so many kills anyway. The impact was certainly felt. So 100 Thieves now getting some early feet over towards the B side of things. Rotation now. Thief is coming over. And TP straight away over towards A. So... Ooh. 100 Thieves, what do they want to do here? Because the spike actually still is over towards B. I think they're trying to fake this one out, trying to force rotators from uh, B to A on the LG side of things. And so far, they dragged Thief back over. The same two defaulters are still here on both ends. Oh, and KZ finding the first blood over towards this bait play over to A long is actually pretty massive for the effort. Onto the Psycho's Nitro for B. No one seems to know that he's left. there, but Modest still Last finds the kill, remaining. and that's the spike on the floor. 100 Thieves. You gotta appreciate the creativity, but LG not interested in that whatsoever as they only drop one, and they come through with the pistol win here in the second half. Yeah, well played by uh, LG there, and unfortunately for 100 Thieves took a little bit of a risk. It doesn't pay out for them. They would hope that a lot more players would have rotated from B to A. You can see the Nitro walking on his way on towards B. Probably doesn't think a lot of people are going to be there. Hoping that not a lot of people are still going to be holding over towards B. But yeah, Luminosity just holding two members, not falling for the bait, not taking the bait just yet. Unfortunately, uh, Spike being dropped by Steel as well over towards B long. So Gambit not paying up for them. 100 Thieves, no force as well. Just a very standard offense now. Frenzy, Shorty in play. Luminosity should be able to pick this one up. And that will certainly help their comeback efforts. Again, 77% defensive wins for both of these teams since the first strike qualifiers have started. Just to kind of, again, frame up where your expectations may lie. Both teams are looking, at least for the moment, solid to start for their preferred sides. But how about this? 100 of these have taken away the U-Haul. This lamps area is massive. It's also an alarm bot play, so there's no retake. And as soon as you start to get all the teleporters through, Mata has to go massive. He finds the first, but he's tagged up pretty heavily. Can he get away from the paint shells just Double barely? back. And now again, doubling back, just like you say, here comes 100 Thieves and Dicey, who has still been allowed to linger over towards A, has freed up so much space. Now he's turned a shorty into a Spectre. 100 Thieves have now taken the numbers 4v3 and Luminosity, they are all over the map and not in a good way. No, this is going to be big for 100 Thieves now. They are in a really good position. The plant will come through as well. Steel is still lurking over towards B. He has a potential 1v1 on his hands soon. Just to bring the numbers down a little bit more. He's going to be able to win that one with just a classic headshot. Now LG have two alive. They're giving away a lot of SMGs here as well. Very low HP for KZ, who only has a ghost. One it's not looking remaining. very good now anymore. Thief would have to come up big time, but he gets Flash. He's blinded out, and there's no way he wins that one. It is Dicey with four, and 100 Thieves outsmarting their opponents. It's Dicey with four. Three of them came off the Spectre he found on the ground, all on the backside of the Lurk playthrough lamps. I mean, for all intents and purposes, 100 Thieves, that was going to be a committal call to be, at least based on what we've seen them do in the past. They're going to leave one player lurking. Maybe he can long flank. Maybe he can find a way to keep defenders from rotating. But the fact that he finds one, picks up the Spectre, turns it into a second, that means 100 Thieves has a wide open free sight at A. And you mentioned that little lurking 1v1 that happened off screen towards the backside of B just really sends it home for 100 Thieves. 100 Thieves looking prime to potentially take this first map as they're up 10-4 and Luminosity are not in nearly as healthy of a situation early as they need to be. A really good communication there as well. You did see Asuna, he was already getting early feet over towards B. Told his team that not much was happening over there, so called for the rotation over. On this particular round though, Dicey managed to push up, oh, sorry, well, KZ actually on defense, pushed up nice and early, doesn't see too much. Asuna will get one kill over towards Ruka, so again, Thief going down early and Asuna is just popping off now. Oh, look at his little blast pack peek as well. Trying to see if he can find maybe one more. There it is. There's number three. Spam shots. Maybe number four in front of him. Not going to happen. He'll yeah, reset. Little baby. bounce pass. There's the fourth. I mean, he's got the opportunity for number five as well. I mean, no one else is here. He's going to use the showstopper. Talk about the disrespect. <laughs> he finds the connection for at least most of the health pool. And as soon as really wants this ace, and he'll hold down the trigger to get it. A hundred themes up 11 to four. And again, that's what, no, that's Strohstopper number four, I think, for our, for 100 T and Asuna. Yeah. He's 21 and eight. Yeah, he's uh, broken the 20 mark now already fairly early on. 15 rounds in, he's been picking up multi-kills. I think rounds in a row now. 
And just as I was done kind of complimenting what 100 Thieves were doing on even the previous round before that one, where again, Asuna were opening up B, allowing the early rotate to come through. Now he comes through on B big time, pretty much even by himself, just picks up four kills in a row. Disrespects the showstopper directly into Proto. It's a complete waste, let's be honest, but at this point in time, he's just completely styling on the opposition. Speaking of styling, Dicey now on the early kill on Tomato. This is a gun round coming through for LG yeah. as well, so they can't really be affording to lose members too early like this. It almost feels like Luminosity, knowing that they've got such a big uh, deficit to try to eliminate, they're trying some cheeky plays in, in a full gun round, like you mentioned, that just isn't really afforded. I mean, you need to win this round, and now it's a 5v3. Asuna is still popping off as he finds another clean shot. KZ will eliminate that threat, but is it still too much of a threat to deal with? 4v2 we go. Nitro onto the site, but Proto finds a kill, and he's been relatively quiet so far. That would need to change. KZ finds a bounce One back. 2v2. Where are the trades at 100 Thieves? Proto is able to stay alive with Bolu with 10 HP, and he will not be able to exist through steal. 12-4 we go, and 100 Thieves are going to have a huge advantage coming into the potential point. last round of the map. Yeah, I think LG at this point, they have to start thinking about the next map already. They don't even really have enough money to do a proper buy here. They will have, you know, some rifles in play, but not really full armor here. Casey will be able to go towards the Blaze Storm. 100 Thieves on 12, should be able to lock this one down. Don't want to call it too early ever, but I mean, once you're 12 to 4 like this, are you really expecting LG to bring out 8 in a row? It just doesn't really seem possible. So I think at this point in time, you have to start thinking about what will happen on Ascent. 100 Thieves have had a very clean bind. Asuna on 22 as well. Steel, again, he started 1 and 6. Steel's now 14 and 10. Unbelievable bounce back for Steel. Nowhere to run! Hunter's here gonna come through, steal. He's also gonna do a little bit of dancing, showcasing that he's very flexible and versatile in his own right. But KZ pushes forward, he'll find a kill. That's actually the spike down. Huge amount of information here as Proto's actually able to find a kill over towards B long. And now as there's a recon bolt that'll find some value onto where Asuna is positioned, this is all KZ. He's just completely checking off to make sure the spike stays safe. And while they've done that, they found clean kills behind it. So LG, a big bounce back round here, but still the task in front of them, even if they win this one, is that they still have to win seven rounds in a row after this one. Now, the big problem here as well, just to speak on this round a little bit more as well, 100 Thieves have to clear both KZ and now also Stella, who's pushed up as well for the rest of 100 Thieves, the last two members alive here between Asuna and Hiko, they would have to kind of isolate down KZ first. Here comes a 1v1 though, but the dash is going to get uh, KZ out to safety for now. Spike is in play in terms of it being in the hands of 100 Thieves, but they still have to win this 2v5 somehow, and they don't know where the rest of the players are. Left. They need to win this 1v1, and they do. Good help from Asuna. Team shots will find the pick. And the even beyond that, even if you don't win this round if you're 100 Thieves, the more weapons you can take out of LG's hands, the better, because their economy still is not going to be all that great. So we'll see how they try to go for this. 10 one seconds now remaining. approaching. Mata's going to find one. Just to spike down once more. Ten seconds go for one kill. Should be opening up maybe an opportunity for a second. There's also a third nearby. Has enough time to get the spike planted. And now all of a sudden it's Eco for what is essentially a 1v3. He's able to avoid the plane storm. Has one player nearby, but Stellar will eliminate the threat. Still a costly round, so not the worst case scenario for 100 Thieves. But for Luminosity, the fact that you were able to get the spike down so quickly, that makes that round much easier considering the deficit you were facing in the arsenal at the beginning of the round. And like you said there as well, going for this round is really important for 100 Thieves because the damage is totally worth it. LG only walk away with two players alive, two guns in hand. They won't have enough to drop over towards teammates, but Snow still not really looking super comfortable here. Stella's not going to have uh, the armor just yet. We'll be able to purchase into that one. But the money situation doesn't look super good. Thief is going to go towards the judge for this particular round. Everyone else will have at least a rifle. Stella now, after dropping for teammates, does only just have the light armor available. So, not the best situation for LG, but they are still sticking through. They have a couple of ultimates in play. They can put the showstopper into this one. And they're going to have to really be pulling out all the stops every single round now. So, they have to kind of be able to look for these ultimate opportunities. But for Luminosity, you've got the showstopper. That could, again, reduce a weapon away. That's what we saw happen last time with KZ and the Bladestorm. So you need to find value off of this showstopper, and they're already going to send over Thief to try to rotate in towards this A site. Here's the take, though, for 100 Thieves. Is it clean? No, it is not. Proto for two. Stellar will fall off the paint shells. Came through for Asuna. Neural theft, though, will be spent. So information on the read here for LG defensively, but nice help here for Asuna as he takes down Proto 2v2. We go. Showstopper available for both of our raised players, and the recon bolt finds a ton of information. Scouts out both players, and that will lead to Asuna picking up the spike, and then he's going to teleport immediately back over to B. 
And has the opportunity to dial back around as well. You don't even have to commit to this teleport, and now you've given information over to LG. You should know it to be a fast rotate, because while well, you already saw them over towards the back of the site, they can get to the very quickly, and they are there now. Hiko needs to try and get here very quickly as well. Ultimates should really come to play here. I think Hiko's setting up for a Hunter's Fury. You also have, by the way, here we go, the Showstopper's in. Oh, this is terrible timing. The Showstopper goes on to site, but as that happens, Asuna is able to sit behind and find the free kill. Halfway on the defuse, trying to sidestep the Hunter's Fury. Not able to do it. A hundred thieves able to take map number one, a critical one at that, 13 to five. And the reason why we say that's a critical one, well, we'll frame it up here in a minute, but map number two, which is Ascent, is much better news for a hundred thieves than it is for Luminosity. Yeah, this is looking very comfortable for 100 T so far. They look much better than they were in open qualifiers. I think if you go back to a lot of the open qualifier games outside of the Dignitar series, uh, 100 Thieves did not look comfortable at all. They had really rough games, especially versus Moon Raccoons. Uh, that was super close, double overtimes there on two maps. And now you look at what we got to bring to you on the very opening map here. Um, it is 100 Thieves all the way here. 13-5, totally in control, barely lost rounds here. You can even chalk one of those rounds up to, you know, a bit of a gamble play they made over right. towards the pistol in the second <laughs> half. I mean, they could have even not have lost that one uh, if, if you know, you could say luck didn't go the other way or they, they made a certain play happen, but, you know, it didn't quite go that way. They expected more rotations to go from B towards A. That didn't happen. So they dropped the spike in the loser round. If it wasn't for that, I mean, I don't even know if 100 Thieves would be losing um, the pistols. So, you know, they gifted one round over. They lost four more rounds in a more genuine fashion. And the best part of 100 Thieves so far is their capability to bounce back even from early deficits in terms of player losses. Those first, I would say, five rounds have been at least fairly close, but still in the first five rounds, there's a four to one in favor of 100 Thieves. And overall, the 13 doesn't come too slowly after that. Well, we'll see. We're going to send things to a break here. We'll find out if LG Loyal can find a way to take Ascent or will 100 Thieves continue to run it up? We'll find out when we come back after this break.